I'm Weston. I love talking about the Jets. And we didn't ruin the tank! Thank God! We lost! 31-28. to The Jets barely lost this game. It was closer than I would have liked. I love the Jets. They are my favorite football team. But I did not. Did not want to win this game. It, it does nothing. Winning at this point does nothing. We're 0 and, we were 0-11. Now we're 0-12. And I get the people that say I can never root against my team. I understand that. But the people that say, oh, I'm still going to root for us to win. How could you not want to win? What does winning do? Not for the people that say, I'm not going to root for or against them, but I can't root against them. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about the people that are still wanting the Jets to win out for some reason. Why? Get, why? I, I love the Jets. What does a win do? If we win today, if we win to next week, week after that, week after that, what does winning do? What does it do? It does nothing. All it does is hurt the tank. All it does is hurt our future because we can go out and we can get the best quarterback prospect since Peyton Manning. Some people say Elway. I think Peyton Manning. Uh, granted, I think Peyton was a way better quarterback than Elway, but I think Elway was a better prospect. Note the difference. Prospect, actual play. You want to go out and potentially give up the best prospect in 20 years, 30 years? When was Elway drafted? Back in the 80s? So, yeah, 30, 35 years? For what? To win a game that does nothing? No. I love the Jets. I just want to take four more losses on the chin and move on with our lives and go get Trevor Lawrence. Now, the Jets did a few things that shocked me today. <clears throat> we looked surprisingly good. Uh, Sam Darnold had a bad day, but I think most people are going to look at it and think, oh, he had a pretty good game. He did not. Do not do not be fooled. He looked bad. But at the end of the day, he still had three touchdowns. And again, that is not anything close to what I need. I would have needed five touchdowns every game. No interceptions, no fumbles for the rest of the game or for the last five games of the season when he got back to even consider if we got that first overall pick, keeping Sam Darnold. He has not done that. This was a bad performance. He had three total touchdowns and three total turnovers. Two fumbles and an interception. And those two fumbles were bad. No ball security. Granted, one of them was kind of on Becton, and I'll get to him in a second, <clears throat> for, you know, not protecting well. But that was still a bad fumble. Sam Darnold was not good today. 14 of 23. Eh. Two passing touchdowns, a rushing touchdown, two fumbles, and an interception. He also had 26 rushing yards. This is not a good game by Sam Darnold. I'm sorry. I like Sam Darnold. This is not a good game. Another person who did not have a good game was Becton. He got beat a few times. Now, <clears throat> he is a rookie. And I think a lot of people lost this in the first dozen games of his... Or not dozen, but the first so odd games of his career up until this point. <clears throat> Makai Becton is a rookie. He is 21, I believe. He's very young. He is entitled to a bad game or two. I'm not going to get angry or upset about Makai Becton having an off day because he is a rookie. That I saw a lot of people freaking out over it and saying we're not overreacting by complaining about this. I don't think you're overreacting for complaining about it, but he is a rookie. He is entitled to a bad game or two here and there in this season. Now, games like this next season, yeah, it'd be a little unacceptable, but this is his rookie season. I can't emphasize that enough. On to rushing. Ty Johnson, who, I'm going to be honest, I, I wasn't really familiar with him. I didn't realize he was the next quarterback up after Gore. Gore went down pretty early. Ty Johnson had a very good game. 22 rushes, 104 yards, and a touchdown. Very good game. Why have we not been feeding this guy, might I ask? Uh, but instead, last year, last week, we fed Gore for 18 rushes. Yeah, great. Good job, Jets. And you had this guy on the bench. Good good job. Uh, Ty Johnson looked pretty good. I have no real complaints. He was hitting the gaps well. Uh, onto the receiving. Mims. Two receptions for 40 yards. Three targets all game. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Three targets? Three targets. This guy, he's averaging like 15 yards a catch this season. It's insane. And we're just not getting the ball to him. I. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't compute in my mind. Mims, he can get open. He's gotten open. He can weave in and out of the tackles. Screen pass. Just do screen passes. I'd be okay with it. I hate screen passes. But he can easily weave in and out of tackles. We've seen it. Why are we not trying to feed him the ball? It doesn't It doesn't make any sense. I hate this coach. I hate the play calling. Uh, 
Jamison Crowder continues to have a pretty good season. Five receptions for 47 yards and two touchdowns. Another pretty good game by uh, Jamison Crowder. On to the defense. Marcus May had a very interesting day because he had a couple of great plays. He also had a couple of total, total bad plays where it looked like he kind of just took a poop in his helmet. Uh, one of them was just getting absolutely manhandled for a 30-yard touch touchdown by uh, Waller. That was bad. Uh, but May had a re fumble recovery, three tackles, and two passes that he defended and broke up. So Marcus May had a pretty good day. He also helped the tank. He was trying to help the tank uh, with a holding call, I believe it was, right around the 10-yard line when the Raiders were driving. I thought they were going to score on that drive. They didn't. They made me uh, get more stressed out for a bit. I'll get to that in a second. Quinnen Williams continues to have a breakout season and really pushes to make the Pro Bowl team and... Dare I say the all-pro team? He is a top run-stopping blocker in this league. He's doing great. Today, he had four tackles, a sack, a tackle for loss, three quarterback hits, and the rest of the team combined to hit the quarterback three times. You remove Quinn Williams from the defense today, and our quarterback hits drop in half. Our sacks drop in half. Quinn Williams, then. Breakout season. Fantastic. He has been the one piece from last year like him and May, I would say, that from last year to this year have improved dramatically. It's been insane. Mark or Quinn Williams, having a fantastic season, should make the Pro Bowl. And to cap up the player recaps, Braden Mann had four punts today and averaged 45 and a half yards per punt. My main man, the man whose jersey I'm wearing, Braden Mann, who also leads the league in Pro Bowl voting. Braden Mann, the GOAT, ladies and gentlemen. The Jets almost won this game, but thankfully, a last-second touchdown by the Oakland Raiders, by Derek Carr, two rugs, I believe it was, lifted them over us. And despite a Hail Mary attempt, the Raiders knocked it down, the Jets lost. 0-12, the tanks roll on, thankfully. Again, I don't take pleasure in saying thankfully the tanks roll on. I don't like that I'm saying the tanks roll on in a good light. In a perfect world, the Jets would be 12-0 right now. We'd be in another division title, we'd be rolling on to the playoffs, but things did not go how I wanted it to, and instead we're 0-12. Now, we have four more games. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe we have the Seahawks, Rams, Browns, and Patriots. The first three should be easy losses. Seahawks should just, I mean, they should absolutely destroy us. The Rams should absolutely destroy us. The Browns, after what they did today to Tennessee, don't let the close score misguide you. They, they could have scored 1,000 if they felt like it. They were up, I believe it was 38-7 to seven at halftime. It was insane. And then they kind of just went into a shell. Patriots kind of scares me. If the Patriots... Here's the thing. If the Patriots can be in the playoffs... If their fate is decided going into that last game, we're screwed. If it is not, we have hope. Because if their fate is, not deci or is decided whether they're not making the playoffs or making the playoffs, and a win doesn't really do anything, I would be genuinely terrified that the man who resigned as Jets head coach on a napkin would try to screw us over one last time and throw the game to let us not get that first overall pick. Hopefully Jackson will, or Jacksonville can win another game. I believe they play the Bears. They almost beat the Vikings today. That would have been great. Thanks. Thanks, Jags. You could have could have done that. That would have been fantastic. Anyway, that would have been great. That would have given us two games in the Tankathon. But as it stands, the Jets still are in control of their own fate and the driver's seat for that first overall pick. Just four more games. We are 75% of the way there. We are so close. Now, Jets, just don't screw it up. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will talk to you next week recapping the Seahawks game. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Go Jets.